Hello, everyone. Welcome back to today's podcast. My name is Brittany Simon. In today's podcast, we have a question from one of you. Before we jump in, I'm drinking a strawberry passion tea today, and it is one of my favorites. I actually just ran out of it today, so I have to go to the store and get more of it. But it's like literally dry free strawberries, dried frozen, dry free, dry, dry frozen, whatever. It's like real strawberries. It makes the most delicious tea, and I'm very excited to drink it while I talk to you today. Leave a comment down below on what tea you're drinking or coffee or whatever your drink is today. This comment came from one of you. It wasn't exactly what I planned for this week, but you know what? It was a good comment and I thought, well, we should just talk about this. So I'm gonna read you the comment. I'm not gonna share the username because you know, I just wanna give some people like privacy, but I wanna go ahead and answer this question. I have my notes in front of me and I hope that I do it justice. So today's question is, can you make an in-depth video about how you turned your life around? For me, I cannot really imagine a future where I suddenly feel okay or good, and I want to know how your feelings progress from wanting to unalive yourself to joy. Okay, so I hope I do this question justice. I tried to do it a little bit of justice when I originally had gotten it on the stream, and I think it's a really good question. I thought about it all morning, I thought about it last night, I took a bunch of notes down, and something that, It's hard for me to convey often in my work. It's like how I did things because again, I so believe in the individual consciousness that it's hard for me to say, well, this is what Brittany did. So this is what you should do. It feels really unnatural for me to think what worked for me will work for you. But there are some general things that maybe I did that could work for you. So I think those are the things I want to focus on. First and foremost, I had to learn who I was as a person and this is the hardest part because in life it's pretty easy to consume your life with other people's problems it's pretty easy to say well i'm gonna live for my kids i'm gonna live for my wife i'm gonna live for my parents i'm gonna live for my work my job i'm gonna live for existence so in my work i like to specify that you yourself your consciousness like who you are that's your existing right the relationship you're having with yourself is your existing and the relationship you're having with everyone else Everything outside of yourself, that's existence. It is very easy, and I would argue that a lot of the culture around us encourages you to live for existence, something outside of yourself. You don't wanna have a midlife crisis at 40 or 50, then you have to know yourself. And the conundrum is, let's say in American culture, though I think this is prevalent around the world, You have your culture, your bubble, the people around you saying like, live for this, live for this, live for this. And it's never really about you. Even when they say they're about the individual, especially living in America, you'll get this idea that yes, it's about you, but then you're selfish if it's actually about you. And so there's like a weird balance. I want you to live for yourself. And then I want you to be a good community member. So I want to encourage you to be both, have a balance between existing and existence, but always remember that you and your relationship with you is the most important relationship. And I think if you can master the relationship with yourself or at least head in that direction, everything around you will improve, period. I don't think this could be argued. I'm pretty sure in every basic philosophy class or therapy you know, uh, appointment you make, people will tell you, you gotta have a good relationship with yourself. You gotta help yourself to help others, right? So when I think of myself and how I did something, I really have to think about why I did something and if I needed to versus wanted to, right? So of course, when I think about why I did something, it was really a need. Now, obviously I believe in free will and I think free will is something you evoke. It's something you have a relationship with. And I think most of us are just kind of like going with the motions, which is fine. It's really normal and natural. And I'm not saying it's bad. I'm saying that it might lead you to despair and it might lead you to confusion. And I think that if you find yourself feeling that way, You might be one of the people that just need to have a more intimate relationship with yourself. So you need to pause what you're doing in terms of existence, you know, pushing you in a direction and say, hold up, what do I want? This is the opportunity for you to actually ask yourself, what do I want? Because right now, living for other people, living for existence isn't making me happy. It's not bringing me joy. And sometimes you feel happiness because that's an emotion and it comes and it goes. But I think I could give you maybe, if you, you maybe, a sense of joy through having that intimate relationship with yourself. So that's why I can't also tell you do this because I did this because if you're having an intimate relationship with what I did, then you're not having an intimate relationship with yourself, right? Okay, so why did I do something? I needed it. So going back to this idea of free will, right? I'm not sure how much 
of me needing something is predestined for me. It's uh, a part of my free will. It's a part of my personality. I don't know if I had been somebody else if I would have needed this journey. But for me, for the Brittany that I am, I was unhappy with catering to existence. Nothing around me was good enough because everything around me needed me to be so different from who I needed to be that it basically was leading me towards my unaliving. And all my life, since I was about eight years old, eight to 30, eight years old to 30 years old, I had desired to unalive myself. But I didn't desire to unalive myself because of Britney's existing. It was Britney's relationship with existence. I never had a problem with being alive. I still don't have a problem with literally being alive. I have a dilemma when I have to deal with people around me who are stealing, raping, lying, who are corrupt and misusing people's feelings, who are sitting around here causing pain after pain after pain, and I'm just supposed to sit here and deal with it. And what's worse is these are the same people that are telling me I'm the one who's insane for not wanting to be here when they're the people around me who are causing so much pain. So then I had to ask myself, why am I struggling so much with this conundrum of wanting to be alive but not wanting to be around my environment? Well, okay, I'll just change my environment. And so I bubble hopped, I culture hopped, I country hopped. I did all the things I needed to do until I found the place I needed to be. I city hopped, I went to house after house, person after person, group after group, only to realize that I was still so unhappy. Why was I so unhappy? And it was because apparently I'm one of those people that, and this is everyone's different, but I am one of those people where other people just cannot be the reason I am joyful. They are the reason I'm happy, but they're also the reason I'm miserable because people are complicated and nuanced and good people don't always get along. So I am not saying like, I'm so much better than everyone else and that's why I don't get along with people. I'm saying everyone is basically good except for the real like outliers because they all have good intentions except for the outliers, right, who don't. And I'm still not getting along with them. Good people don't always get along. If good people were getting along, the world would be a much more easygoing place. But sometimes good people don't get along, right? So why wasn't I getting along with people long term every day? Well, I don't think we're always meant to. I get along with people in spurts. We get along with people, generally speaking. I have my inner circle that I almost always get along with. And then sometimes we don't, but it's most of the time we're getting along, right? 99% of the time we're getting along. And then on occasion, we're not getting along, which is normal. Then with the other parts of the world, eh, maybe it's like 50%, depending on the vibe, right? How close we are, how intimately um, our lives are intertwined, how much do we see each other, what investment do we have in each other's life, that's going to differ how much we're getting along. And I don't mean um, we're always like at each other's throats. Sometimes we're just not interested or vibing with somebody. So getting along might be something on the spectrum of just not a vibe to we're, we're fighting, right? And so I rarely am fighting with people. I try really hard to make the peace. I'm not currently fighting with anyone right now, literally. Like I'm not sitting here thinking like I need to fight with somebody. Um, for the most part, I have pretty good boundaries. And for the most part, I'm open to talking to and making peace with most people, give or take a couple of, I think, bad characters. But otherwise, like, yeah, like people, people are just people and they're going to humans are going to human, right? So, okay, I'm having this like realization with myself when I'm younger that Something about bubble hopping and going through existence isn't satisfying me. Why isn't it satisfying me? And again, it's because the people that I'm with are not me. And we're not having the same desires out of life. And we're not curious in the same way. And there's nothing wrong with that. When I was really, really young, I thought this indicated something unique about me. It doesn't. If we were more honest with ourselves, I think we would all agree that most of the time we actually aren't with people. We actually, when we have a good relationship with ourselves, we want to be with ourselves. I think there is this conundrum in the world where we're told we need other people. And I think, yes, on some level, of course, I love my communities. I need my brothers and sisters and my besties. But I don't need them in the sense that my whole identity is going to crumble if they all die in a war. This happens. This happens. We might get a horrible disease that wipes out the planet and it's only going to be you and me and 500 other people. And in some way that could devastate us. But I think you get to a point in life where you radically accept that you're a human being on a planet and things could go wrong. 
So ultimately, you're having a relationship with your own consciousness through every meditative scenario and hypothetical you put yourself through. It's not about disconnecting. It's about radically accepting that our life will end and everyone around us will end. And so you make the best with the time you have now. And that usually can involve, if you find yourself in conflict with existence, having more of a relationship with yourself. Again, you're not rejecting society. You're not saying, I'm going to live on an island and I don't care about people. Quite the contrary. You're going to say, I love people enough that I'm going to give us distance. Distance makes the heart grow fonder. I will see you when I want to see you and I will hang out with myself when I want to. Because often in life, for me, again, this is just for me, when I found myself struggling, it was because I just couldn't understand why people were thinking a certain way. And Now that I understand that it comes from a belief and a desire to do good, I just disagree with how they're doing good, I can put my anxiety at ease and say, okay, girl, since we don't believe in controlling people, since we believe in evoking free will and agency over self, and because we don't want to be a dictator, we're going to let people live their lives. And unless they're directly harming us, we're going to mind our business. And unless like a victim comes to me and I need to help them, and unless like certain caveats, right? But often, most of the people we're not getting along with just have different football team favorites, have different religions, think one thing differently about you and your lifestyle. Realistically, most people on the planet do disagree and don't get along. And the only reason we kind of make it through the day is that we tend to mind our business. It's when we don't and we put ourselves in other people's lives and force them to deal with us that we have a lot of conflict. And so I think for the betterment of the communities around us and for the betterment of ourselves, we need to mind our business. Now, obviously, it's okay if you live in a space where you get to have a radio show or a YouTube channel or you're going to church and in your communities you talk about other communities, as long as that talk doesn't turn into violence, doesn't turn into hate or discrimination. And that's really difficult since a lot of us are dealing with people around us who do want to take away civil rights, who do want to counter whether or not you have the ability to do what you want with your body. It's so interesting that so many people want to evoke choice when it comes to the shot, but not when it comes to whether or not you should give birth. And I think this is the conundrum of life. And so if you're like me and you're sitting there and you're in between these two bubbles, it gets exhausting looking at people and saying like, just get along dudes or get over it or make it work. But they're not going to make it work. They're actually going to make your life miserable through this process and they're going to tear you apart. And so instead of letting existence tear you apart, I would, I would say make a path for yourself that lives in parallel with existence, but doesn't have to drown inside of it. Look, when I'm hanging out with the religious, more power to you, have some fun. But you have to admit, it's very stressful being in an environment where people are literally talking about you as a queer person, like you are the reason the world is ending. And you're just sitting there looking at them like, dude, I just want to go home and watch some anime and make love to my husband and do a live stream. I just want to go live my life. And of course, they're sitting there and looking at you like you're the reason the world is ending. You're the reason. And then on the other front, as a conservative, it must feel very stressful when you have these progressives looking at you and saying like, you're the reason the world is ending. And the truth is the world's not ending. But that emotional pressure we put on ourselves is in a way feels like we should end things and makes us feel like we should unalive ourselves or, God forbid, we should destroy other people. And so there's something very scary about it that is coming from us. We are the reason. And that's what's so hard to understand is that everyone is causing the chaos and it starts with them and how you handle people that are different from you. Wishing ill on people, being vindictive, being bitter, wanting to, you know, gain control by destroying other people, this is all bad. This is the fear. This is your anxiety. This is not reasonable. This is not logical. This is not emotionally sound. But it's very, very much, it feels so natural because it is, it's coming from our fear. So again, when I think about my life and why I came to this point, it was never about the relationship I was having with myself. Well, I mean, it was, but it wasn't because I hated myself. It was because I hated the way the world made me feel about myself when I knew I was just trying to be an okay person. Look, I'll be real with you guys. I don't have any crazy stories. I don't have any crazy stories about what I've done in my life. I mean, I could sensationalize them, but I feel like compared to the, some of the stories we've heard this week, 
I'm pretty freaking normal, okay? I'm a queer kid who was stuck in a conservative home who just wanted to feel normal. I'm a woman who feels pretty confident with her body and likes to explore through the means of like nude art and YouTube and all these things. But gosh, I've never raped anybody. I've never killed anybody. I've never stolen more than a couple dollars worth of food a day when I was really poor and I didn't have money. I've never done things that would make me genuinely f- like logically think I was a bad person. Now, if you have done those things, I think there is a road to recovery for you. And I think there's a path to redemption for you. But I think those people are separate from most of the people that we're dealing with every day. When I read this comment and this person says, can you make an in-depth video about how you turned your life around? For me, I really can't imagine a future where I suddenly feel okay or good. And I'm looking at you like, This does not sound like somebody that's murdered somebody. This sounds like somebody that is feeling the pressure from existence and feeling like you're not worthy and there's a reason you probably feel that way. And I don't think it's probably because you did something horrible. I'm assuming you haven't done something horrible. And even if you have, there is a path to redemption, okay, usually with professionals and people who can help you. But in most cases, I think you're like me. You're just trying to be happy and watch some anime and live your life. And people are sitting here and looking at you like you are the reason the world's ending. When you're just trying to, you're just trying to pay your bills, bro. I'm just trying to pay my bills, okay? And I get it because they'll blame you. You're the reason the family's tearing up. You're the reason America's crumbling. You're the reason the world is ending. You're the reason the West is failing. And you're just sitting here thinking, bro, I just want to be happy. You cannot look to these people to validate your existence when they are so miserable themselves or they are so fearful themselves or they are dealing with their own stuff, you need to look at yourself and say, what is the relationship I want to have with myself? And so for me, again, I had to sit myself down in the middle of a forest during a camping trip, road trip, and tell myself, okay, girl, like, who are you? What are you really doing here? You're already here on this planet, okay? Okay. And we don't want to unalive ourselves, even though we feel like we really want to. How do I get away from this? And really, it was fulfilling a need I had had my whole life. How do I actually enjoy being alive? And it came down to having very explicit boundaries with people in my life. Because even the people who love you the most, sometimes they want for you things that don't make any sense. It's like a parent who really wants their kid to go to college, like very badly. But the kid is, you know, setting up a, a startup that's about to land them a billion dollars. It's like, well, you only want me to go to college so I'm secure in my career. But what about this thing that could be an amazing idea? And maybe the parents are wrong in that situation, but maybe the parents are right. Maybe college is the only way for this kid to have any sort of guaranteed possible future, right? You just never know. But out of fear, out of love, we usually try to control people with the best of intentions. And then those people internalize those thoughts and think and think to themselves, like, can I even trust myself to make a decision for myself? And then this doubt consumes you and it pulls you down and it weighs on you. Like, how can I know that I'm right when everyone is telling me to do this thing? And ultimately, everyone is always going to tell you to do a thing. Everyone for the rest of your life until the day you die through the news or your family gatherings or your Twitter feed will be telling you what to do and they'll be telling you you're wrong. They'll be consistently making fun of you, consistently doubting you, consistently. And look, some of them might be right. Sometimes they're going to read you perfectly. And then sometimes they're going to get you so wrong and you're going to have to know yourself in order to actually understand that they're wrong. And that is what's so hard about knowing yourself. It sounds easy. Oh, I just know myself. This is where it's at. But if you really need to know yourself because you are hearing all of these voices, all of these people around you who love you, telling you who you are, and you're like, something doesn't feel right about that, man. You have to then learn to trust yourself. And that's really difficult, but very possible. Okay, so I look at this comment again and it says, Can you make an in-depth video about how you turned your life around? I cannot imagine a future where I suddenly feel okay or good. You know what's so funny? That word suddenly sticks out to me. Um, It wasn't really suddenly for me, but it felt suddenly. I remember I had been so struggling. Man, I had been struggling. I had just come out of a relationship that I was really disappointed, didn't end up going somewhere in a healthy direction. And I was living on a farm with my brother and we were building fences at like 6 a.m. You guys know the story. And one day I just 
you know, after contemplation and I was currently off YouTube, I was just on Patreon because I was like revamping my life and trying to figure myself out. I was really in the middle of it. One day I woke up and suddenly I felt like I understood everything. Not everything in the universe. Not like that, guys. Like I don't, you know, but everything about myself. I woke up and I felt like, oh, oh, oh. Oh, like it felt like I had understood everything about myself. And not that I would know everything about myself forever because you grow and change. But in that one moment in time, that one, like that one, I realized like, oh, my micro and my macro started to make sense. Now, by this time I had, I had written down the levels or I had known about the levels. I just didn't think I was a five. I was like a four. And so I was waiting for my five moment. And this is what I call my five moment. That moment I woke up and everything fit perfectly. It was like I was living my whole life out of sync, out of balance. And every time I worked to do it, sometimes it would flip back and then it would go like this and then it would flip back. And every time I felt close, sometimes it would go like this and I'm like, oh my gosh. And then finally one day I woke up and it was like, ding. And I was like, oh, I get it. I get how little I know, how curious I am, how sure I know myself, because I've done so much of the work to know myself, and how open I am to learning. I knew in that moment, sitting in the middle of a farm, away from the world, in a town of 500 people, surrounded by animals and a few families, that if I lived here my whole life in this little bubble and I never left, I could live a great life and I could do that. There were people in that town who didn't even know what YouTube was. There were people in that town that had lived there their whole life and had never left. And if I could do that, if I could live in a small town and never know anything else about the world and still have a great life, then what was anyone ever upset about in terms of Kim Kardashian or Twitter or drama. I saw a um, TikTok perfectly timed for today where, and I'll show it at the end of the podcast. I'll link the creator down below. But it was basically like, you know, how can you be stressed if you have a rock? Like if you're going through life and you just find a rock, how can you be stressed? And the idea behind it is kind of like everything everywhere all at once when there are rocks in that scene. Like we're all just rocks on this planet and we're all just like sitting here and we can do whatever we want with life. And that's why it's so difficult when existence decides to go to war or people decide to hurt each other or people decide to be cruel to each other. Because it's like, you know, you could just like not do any of that, right? You could literally just not do any of that. But the dilemma is they're all on their own journeys. And so they're doing what makes sense with them and you're doing what makes sense with you, which is why I'm saying existence is great and you can rely upon rely upon it to be um, an ever-growing entity, but you can't rely on it for your own joy because existence is having its own journey. Like Putin feels like he has to do what Putin feels like he has to do. Trump feels what Trump feels he has to do. Andrew Tate and Sneeko and everybody else on the internet, they're all doing what they think they have to do. And then we all just have to sit there and have a relationship with that without becoming the people we didn't like in the first place without becoming as ugly as we view some of these people. We have to take a road that's about us. Because remember, their lives are about other people. They're living for other people. As much as Trump says he's living for himself, not the way he brags about his net worth that doesn't exist. Because if you're living for yourself, who cares what your net worth is? Why you got to tell people about it? So again, when you're moving through life, And you realize like, oh, I could just like sit here and no one will ever know. I could turn off my whole stream, delete my YouTube channel and disappear from the world and it won't matter. There's something in that that is so freeing, but also makes it clear that you have to live for the relationship you have with yourself. Talk to other people and then come back to yourself. So again, I have an existing and it's the relationship I have with myself. 
and then my partner has an existing, the relationship he has with himself, and then we have an existing that we have as a couple, and then we are each other's existence all the same. And he's the only form of existence that I want around me 24-7, including my cat. My cat and my partner is the only form of existence that I would like around me 24-7. Every other form of existence I want in spurts. I love them. They're amazing. I love my family. I love my friends. I love the world. But y'all overwhelm me and overstimulate me. And you, I love you so much. You push your narratives in my face too often if we hang out too much. And it's exhausting. Because again, I need to go back to my reality where like I don't need to do anything. I don't need to hurt anybody. I don't need to wish ill on anybody. I don't need to be cruel and unusual. I can just chill. But when you're with other people who cause tension and chaos and they want to hurt somebody, man, all of a sudden you want to hurt somebody. You know what I'm saying? It breeds out of you this like instinct to join in. And that's why sometimes even you'll see me do it on stream. You'll see me do it in my work. It is so hard not to feel like, yeah, I'm going to get defensive too. I'm going to I'm going to get violent too because you start to feel afraid. And then when you realize like that fear comes from your relationship with existence instead of the relationship you're having with yourself, because I know I'm not violent. I know I've, I don't do these things. It's only when I feel under threat that my brain starts to think like, yeah, we need to protect ourselves. And everyone is going off of that all the time, especially if you're on Twitter full time. Especially, I remember when I used to be on Twitter and I used to be in politics, I was so scared all the time. And I was scared because other people were very scary. And then I would become scary and then people would be afraid of me. I don't want people to be afraid of me. But it's really difficult not to pretend you're scary or not to move into that mode when you don't feel scared yourself. So again, that relationship I have with myself to keep my peace and joy is a relationship I'm actually having with existence. Because my life is great. There's no violence happening here. There's no yelling and hurting each other. There's no anger here. There's nothing. It's just chilling. But when I have to counter existence, when I have to be upset because somebody on the internet is spreading STIs or someone on the internet is raping somebody or someone on the internet, and I'm sitting here like, oh my gosh, what are you doing to each other? That's me involving myself in existence. So of course, realistically, I have a job. And my job involves existence, so I'm learning to deal with that. And I'll be dealing with existence until the day I die. And again, there I have favorite parts of existence, like my partner who I want around me 24-7. But then everyone else I want in spurts, which is why I don't work 24-7. Even though I work seven days a week, I take time off. Because I need a break from y'all. Because the amount of times I start to feel anxious because somebody is being weird makes me want to be weird. And I don't want to be weird 24-7. I didn't suddenly turn my life around. I slowly but surely tried to find balance between me existing in existence and the pressures I felt around me from them. I didn't suddenly, but when it happens, it does feel like all of a sudden. Like I woke up and all of a sudden I realized this is about me and my control over involving myself in existence. So here's my Biggest recommendation to you that I think is very hard to imagine because, again, existence is telling you you can't do it. Existence will tell you you can't live the life you want. You can't have the friends you want. You can't have the lovers you want. You can't have the job you want. Existence is telling you you can't just pick up and go. Existence is always doubting you. People will always make it harder for you because they make it harder for themselves. So you have to, with love and care, do it anyways. You have to be happy anyways, find your joy anyways, reach your life goals anyways, and let people doubt you because they're just projecting, they're doubting themselves. Of course, I don't know anything you don't know. I don't know anything that you don't already know. I just implement the tools because I have to, or I'm not going to make it to 90 kids. I'm very serious. I want to live now more than most people can like even fathom because I do love existing. I'm just exhausted with y'all, okay? And I don't want to do this game again, so no reincarnation, please, because I don't want to deal with existence again. 
But if I could do reincarnation and just be myself, I would. But it's not like that, right? The game doesn't involve just me. The game involves a challenge of understanding others. So exhausting. But it's always about what we don't understand in ourselves. So you have to start asking yourself, okay, what is the relationship I have with my finances? How do I get them to where I need to? Because finances in this world are the key to a lot of choice. You don't need to have a lot of money. You need to have enough money for the right goals. That's number one. For the year that I was road tripping, I was living off 12K and I managed to pay all my bills and I was living, you know, off of like beans and rice, but it worked, you know, I did it. And then I got in some credit card debt because, you know, again, I was contemplating on aliving myself. So to be fair. And then I moved my income up to basically zero at one point, <laughs> but I had no debt. So it was kind of easy to live off that. Okay. And then, and then I was living with family. So that kind of helped, but I was working my brother's farm, like I told you guys. And then, and I was making, I wasn't making zero. I was making, um, like $600 a month, maybe a thousand dollars a month at that time. So I was living off very little. And then I moved my income up to 60 and then I moved it up to 80 and then I moved it up to a hundred thousand. And then like, let's see what every year brings us. But it's not really about all the money. It's about enough money to make it work. You know what I mean? Just enough money to make the lifestyle work. And that will give you an idea of where to go there. And then in the future where you can go, right? Because again, I live now in Croatia, which is a much different financial situation than America. I'd be playing a much rougher game in America off the income I make now than I'm playing here. So the game you're playing matters, right? Where are you with your physical health? Your body is so important. You have to take care of it. It's the thing that gets you from point A to point B. And regardless if you're dealing with disabilities, there are games you can play that put you in a better position than you were in before. But they are difficult just like everyone else. But your cards will be a little different if you're disabled. You're playing a different game, right? But that's really important. Where are you with your body and what's the relationship you're having with it, right? Because it's your boat, girl. It's literally your ship moving your consciousness through the world. And then your mental health, your spiritual health, that relationship you're having with your mental health, not your spiritual health, I misspoke, your mental health, Okay. Am I dealing with schizophrenia? Am I dealing with anxiety, depression? Am I dealing with a mental health crisis like NPD, BPD? Am I actually just pretty anxious and sad because of my situation? Do I need to fix a few things to help my mental health? Do I need pills? Do I have ADHD? Do I have autism? What's my challenge in terms of my mental health? Am I dealing with like mental illness, like a personality disorder or am I, or something like schizophrenia, which I think is more technically a mental illness, or am I dealing with something that I'm genetically born with and so I have to deal, everyone is dealing with something different or am I neurotypical? Am I, am I totally healthy? Am I actually dealing with little to no issues? Do I just have maybe um, three sessions of therapy worth of problems? You know, everyone's different. And then your spiritual health, philosophy help, right? Who, what do I believe about the world? Do I believe in God? What do I believe about myself? Do I believe I even have a, a soul? Do I think I'm even alive? What is the what is the reality I share about myself? So I think I'm alive. I'm pretty sure the world is real. I don't believe in simulation theory. I don't think there are parallel universes. I don't think there is a God. I don't think there's technically magic like vampires and werewolves. I don't think um, there's any of those things in the world. I think we're just people on a planet like animals and we're doing our best with what we have. And the best with what I have is me. I'm the best thing I have. I'm the best tool. I'm the best source of knowledge. I'm the best everything because I'm the one who can do stuff. If I don't know something, I'm the one who can Google. If I need more money, I'm the one who can work. If I need to express myself, I'm the one who's going to do it. So me, okay, right? But of course, we start with ourselves, we look to others, and we end with ourselves. So I exist. I maybe lean on my partner, and then my partner leans on me, but then we both go back to ourselves. Because I and my partner are a we, but we're also an I and a him, a him and a her. We are also ourselves, a them and a they. We're like ourselves, and then together we're a we. So we're still our own separate entities. He's going to be on his journey and I'm going to be on mine. And our journey right now is with each other. And then our goal is to be with each other throughout this adventure. So all of these things he's also doing and I'm doing, right? We're both having these unique separate relationships with these things. And then we come together and share like, oh, what did you discover about yourself? What did you discover about yourself in relation to me, you know, and so on and so forth. And of course, the last thing, which is who are you in the anime? What's your character trope? What's your thing? Like I know a lot of who I'm not and that helps me discover who I am. So I recommend you sit down 
watch your favorite form of media, maybe even your favorite YouTubers and think like, which YouTuber do I relate to the most? If I'm being honest, like who really am I in the story? Like, you know, growing up when I was in my like, oh, I'm so edgy. I'm a teenager sociopath days where I was like, being a sociopath is cool. I'm like Dr. House. I'm not like Dr. House. I'm incredibly caring and thoughtful and I haven't done 1% of the bad things Dr. House has done. But in my youth, I like romanticized being mean to people I thought it made me tougher like I'm a logical person and logical people are mean and now I grow up and I'm like oh that's so silly like I'm compassionate and thoughtful and considerate and sometimes I can be mean but that is my best self my best self isn't my mean self right so as I've gone older I've realized that I used to wish I was like logical because I thought logical meant cruel only to realize like, no, that's the way human beings with weak sense of self think that's what that means. It's like the way stoicism has been so butchered by the internet. Like stoicism is in relation to joy, as Vervecki always says, right? It's like a key to I am you and you are me. You know, depending on how you view stoicism, I was just reading about it this morning to go like over some thoughts I had around it. And it was so beautiful the way the people were describing the brotherhood of it and how we were in it for each other and how there would be no reason to be kind of cruel to one another because logically it would make no sense to be cruel to one another. But yet the people who talk about stoicism on the internet are some of the meanest bullies around. We have associated logic and stoicism with cruelty. And that is such a mistake because it's so untrue. It's just so untrue if you look into the depth of these philosophies and you look at the reason people were having a relationship with them and it was to be less cruel. It's often to be more efficient, to be more kind or to be more connected to one another, but especially connected to the self, right? Because when you're connected to the self, you realize like everyone is you and you are everyone. Not literally, not like with magic, but I mean, I didn't choose to be me and you didn't choose to be you, but hey, we're still, we're both stuck on the same planet doing the same stuff. And there's something really profound and beautiful about that. So I didn't suddenly feel okay or good. They progressed over time. And I stopped wanting to unalive myself when I realized I never had a problem being alive. I had a problem being alive on a planet where people were so cruel to one another and were so good at convincing me that I was an awful person when I have nothing on my resume that tells me, you know what I mean, that I am even close to being a bad person. And to be fair, most people are not very close to being a truly bad person, like evil, like the worst of the worst. Most people are on some sort of spectrum in relation to that. And some people have a few things to work on more than others. But that's why it has to be about the individual journey. Because we're not the same. We are nuanced and complicated and it is not the same. It's like even Dr. Jordan Peterson, who I think is such a complicated person who's so riddled with fear and paranoia, has moments of such wisdom Like when he talks about this two-dimensional villain, like they're not just two-dimensional, they're complicated and nuanced and you can't simplify people into villains or heroes, especially when villains and heroes aren't even the best tropes to be. There's so many other better tropes, but people always think we only fall into two categories. When on this like little short time we have on the planet, you could find yourself fitting into 30, 40, 50 categories by the time you die. And that's kind of exciting. So I didn't just turn my life around. It didn't happen suddenly. It happened with concerted effort over a long period of time until one day I woke up and everything made sense. Everything I was working for. It's like you're working on a math equation or you're solving a mystery. And, you know, there's a day, there's a moment in time when you finally find the answer. And that's all I did is I worked and I was curious and I was thoughtful until one day I found the answer. But the answer only applies to Brittany because the answer was for me and only me. And now you get to go and find the answer that's made for you. Because again, what I did was about me. And what you're going to do is going to be about you, not about anyone else. You're not proving something to anybody else. You're not doing it for anyone else. You're doing it for you. And then after, when you figure it out, naturally, you will benefit other people. So don't worry if you have kids or parents or people who rely on you. They will be better because you've been better. 
Okay, guys, with that said, thank you so much for that comment. I really appreciate it. I hope I did it justice. If you guys have any follow-up questions, leave it in the sections down below and I'll just make more podcasts on it. Okay, guys, talk to you soon. Have the most fantastic day. Bye. In my head, in real life while I'm dead, my belly's being fed and I'm okay. I'm just fine, yet all I do is whine, not to you in my mind, cause I know I don't make sense. I've been nothing but blessed, so why's my life a mess? Please tell me, cause I'm sick of thinking, yeah. I'm sick of reaching out for the truth And living life as a fool Dun, 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 dun.